Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and welcome back to the Package versus Nuke Challenge. We're going to try to get back on track with this one, and I'll show you the rest of the colonies. But many of you are asking, or even starting to make splits in those southern states. And if you're wanting to see how we made these two splits right here last year, whoops, I'm going to leave that up here. And they were really easy to do, um, didn't take very long. The splits do very well. This one was a five frame split. It was a couple, I think it was two frames of brood and then a couple frames of stores, maybe it was three frames of brood, you can watch it, uh, the video if you want to see that. But they're looking very good, and they're needing more space because it is late March and the pollens are coming in like crazy. We're gonna be having nectars come in in large amounts soon. Right now there's just a little bit of trickle of nectar, not very much. You know, whenever there's, we're in between rains, lots of wind, you know, just that time of the year. However, this colony, we're gonna check it real quick. We know that the queen's down below. We're gonna put an excluder on it, and we're gonna give them a box of drawn combs where when that nectar and extra pollen comes in, they can move that above, and so they're not clogging that area down below. And then I'm gonna be moving this feeder um, out of here and adding a comb so she has one more comb to lay in. That's really important with the single um, brood management. I'm going to have a video on this specifically coming up as soon as I can get to it. We just have a lot going on, so you'll just bear with us. But we're really going to try this year to focus on queen rearing, mite control, nutrition, and making splits. Now, we've already done some videos on these things, but we're going to try to get into a lot more detail, especially on the queen rearing and the mite control. And again, we have playlists. If you go to the home of, um, page of our Tennessee's um, Beast channel, then, or this channel, you can just um, hit the playlist and it's pretty organized. You can find what you want, maybe. And if you have any questions, just leave them below. All right, so we've got our feeder out of here. Now the queen we raised ourselves, and so these are our queens. We have nothing pure. A lot of people ask if, you know, there's carny, there's Italian in here. We really don't care that much. We want bees that, you know, live and thrive and and survive and that's all we really need is healthy bees you know of course we don't want to see any brood diseases so if we see any of that we we get rid of that we can talk more about that in another video now we got lots of nutrition over here on the outer frame which is very normal this time of the year not a whole lot of surplus but we're going to stick that over here towards the edge we're going to be sticking a comb that is drawn into the center of the, not the complete center, but I want to get it between that frame and where the queen's laying. So here is the next frame over, and oh wow, look at this one. Look at all those eggs in there. When this frame right here is capped and all that brood emerges out, this is going to be a lot of bees. Now this is a foundation frame, I believe, we threw in last year. Sorry about the wind. They're drawing it out a little bit. Let's see if we can find her. And then we'll add that space on. Man, that frame is heavy. See, this is a problem though. This hive is fixing to really pack this thing out. I mean, look, they're just putting drones down here. Look at this frame right here. The poor queen has no room to lay. We've got to get her some laying room and fast. Wow, that is just, look at all of that bee bread right there on both sides. That is a lot of pollen. For those of you who don't know, bee bread is just pollen that is packed into cells and fermented. And it's just a long um, lasting protein, fat, and mineral source for the bees. They prefer fresh pollen, in my opinion, and some other research backs that up. And uh, just like they prefer nectar over honey, but both nectar and pollen spoil very rapidly. Oh, this is gorgeous. Lots of beautiful brood there. Stick that back in here. But there's no room in that frame for her to lay. It's full of something. I've yet to find a good spot really for her to lay. Everything's laid up. This hive is going to want to start swarming really soon. Oh my goodness. Look at that, more bee bread. And I've used this term in the past, pollen bound. And it can happen. 
some years and if the bees don't have enough room they, they will just bring in that pollen some people will say oh the bees know when to stop no they really don't they go after it and they go after it and they go after it until there's nothing to go after and they will plug the hive up with pollen nectar whatever and if they run out of room this hive is going to want to start swarming within the week oh my goodness and we're also losing bee production right here more bee bread oh would you look at that we got ourselves a queen cup down here a lot of people have been asking me about this so we got a lot of drone brood right in here that's the stuff that's going this way now right up in here we have ourselves a queen cup and there is nothing in it yet all right this poor colony needs room what we're going to have to do is take some of this bee bread and move it up we've got to get that queen laying room now hopefully these next two frames aren't as full of uh, bee bread well this one's definitely not uh, that's a lot of bees right there fixing to come on out of there but where's the queen laying that's the question some of this is emerging out of the cell. You can see some of these fuzzy bees over here. Maybe she's on this. I haven't seen her yet, but honestly, I've been too busy looking at the other stuff. Wow, what a frame of bees. This will be a perfect frame to sit an empty drawn comb beside because she's gonna be attracted to that frame due to the pheromones of the emerging bees. So we're going to stick another empty one next to that. And this one is full of resources. I can fill it. Yeah, it's full of resources. Oh my goodness. See, this is why you got to check your colonies, folks. Things change very rapidly. It was not this full two weeks ago. But I've been busy with other colonies. I haven't been able to get to it. So I haven't spotted the queen. Maybe you have, but she, poor thing, is looking for any space to lay that she possibly can find so this is the one that was all full of that calf brood and we are going to be grabbing this drawn comb right here and placing that right there and some people will say never do this i disagree on a colony that's strong enough to manage the heat it'll be just fine now we are going to be putting some of this back in here Let's see, we've got bee bread and calf brood. We have bee bread and calf brood. <laughs> uh, we really ought to take a frame of bee bread from this colony. If it didn't have brood mixed in, I'd take one and stick it in the freezer. So I'm going to stick that right there. All right, now this has got some younger stuff in it. She might be on this frame because there are bees emerging out of their cells right here. One, two, a lot of fuzzy bees on this frame. Thing of it is, she might be halfway back down into a cell and you just, you don't see her. I don't see her. But because this one is emerging brood i'm also going to leave this one down below because when, as that emerges she's going to have room hey look at all this right here look at all that pollen that's fallen out of the cells where it hasn't been packed in fully yet mm. bittersweet kind of like chalk uh, with a little bit of honey mixed in or something like that all right, I am going to, I don't see the queen on this one. And you're like, what are you doing, Cayman? Weird stuff, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to, when, when the hive, hives get really packed full of bees, and I'll do this even more on bigger colonies, I'll shake those, those frames off right there. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this down in here Some people don't like taking some of the drones out, but there's varroa mites typically in the drone brood if it's gonna be anywhere. And also, I don't like 
that going down there and crushing bees as I slide that frame in. I definitely don't want to crush the queen. So that's why I'm doing that. All right, so now we've got that right there. We are going to, one thing, we're gonna, we're gonna space this out, but one thing I wanna mention is I am not taking young larvae and separating that out. This is cap emerging brood, and then we have the larvae and stuff over in here, what little was in here, and that's together. That's the stuff that's gonna take the most heat to, to protect. And so we've kept most of the brood together. And then we have these two empty frames right here giving her some room to lay in, which is very crucial. We've got to get that taken care of. Now I'm spacing this out with a nine frame spacer. You can have 10 frames in the bottom. I prefer nine because it gives you a little bit more space to work with, but you know, whatever you want to do works. We're going to throw our excluder on here. And uh, the metal ones work best, but these plastic ones work very well also. And now I'm going to take this box and throw that right there. Check out this other colony, by the way. Pop this lid just a little bit. I meant to open it earlier. Ooh. Well, oh yeah, I got things tied up. See that? Right. It's, it's just about the same size. It's fixing to need some space as well. So. All right, I'm gonna double check, make sure the queen's not up here because that would kind of be counterproductive to put that excluder in. I mean, thankfully she would have plenty of laying room up here. We are putting a little bit of brood up into um, this top box, but a lot of it's bee bread. See if you can spot that queen, Laurel. I'm not seeing her. She's probably down below. Now one thing we're gonna do is most of the brood's on this side. So we're gonna be sticking this over above that so the heat rises and there you have it so three now I am missing a frame because of that frame feeder so I'm just gonna go ahead and temporarily stick that oh well I didn't bring enough anyways so we just gave him some room you got to watch it out ladies and gentlemen because it doesn't matter that there's not a lot of nectar coming in that pollen can come in and plug that brood nest. People all over the place are catching swarms. Tennessee, Virginia, Oklahoma, everywhere down south, even some places a little further north. So um, it's not always nectar that is going to clog that brood nest. A lot of times it can just be ample amounts of pollen. And if your bees don't have enough room to get that out of the queen's way, she's gonna run out of room to lay. That's one of the main things that causes the, the bees to wanna to swarm. It's just the queen running out of room to lay. So if you have any questions on what we did in this video or anything, leave them below.